good to be with you. How are you this morning? We are great. You uh, are a Republican. You work for Phyllis Schlafly. You were head of the Republican Party here in the state. And you have an interesting take on all of this, including what happened to Jeb Bush. Yeah, you know, McGraw, you and I, of course, I, I sometimes think we ought to record our conversations in the afternoon after the, your show when we catch up like we did yesterday. And, you know, what we were saying, and, and you asked me about it, and I went into it, and you said, hey, that's good stuff to talk about. It's just this, is that the system of running for president, the Republican nomination, which is the only one I really know, I don't know the Democrat as well, um, it's set up so that you have to raise a boatload of money. And, and you're supposed to raise a boatload of money and pay dozens and dozens of consultants, and then spend tens of millions of dollars on, on radio and television. And, you know, you probably know, but maybe your listeners don't. When somebody buys uh, political advertising, the purchaser, the sort of consultant, gets 10% of the buy. So you buy a million dollars of, of TV, you get a, a $100,000 take for the person buying it, the consultant. So we had Jeb was the classic you know, ability to raise $150 million, the classic Republican candidate, and all these consultants, it's coming out, all of them made, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last year, and it was all wasted. And, and the reason it was wasted is lots of reasons, but one of the big reasons is that the, the, uh, the TV is not working the same way, the consultants aren't able to sway the base the same way, and we just have, but it's two in a row. Scott Walker also raised an inordinate amount of money, and when he quit, he had he was his payroll the last month he was in was something like six hundred thousand dollars just for consultants full time paid staff and he washed out before he got a single vote so we're we're seeing some sort of uh, crack up of the system and I think that's what Jeb went through and it's kind of you almost feel I mean I feel bad for him in a way he's a better candidate than the consultants made him out to be I think he deserves a refund you also say Ed Martin that consultants flock to the guy who's who has the ability to raise the money. Yeah, well, and, and the only reason, and the best way to say that is the day after, no kidding, the day after Jeb was out, the consultants were announcing they were going with Rubio. I mean, and the day after Walker got out six months or eight months ago, a bunch of them announced they were going to Jeb Bush. I mean, it's, it's just a trail of money. And again, none of that's bad, right? I mean, if I came to you and I said, hey, McGraw, you've never run for office. Let me tell you how to target, you know, certain kinds of things in mail or, or TV or radio. The problem is they don't win. And, you know, this is Romney went through this and spent tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions that he raised. They just don't win. And, and we're seeing this. But make back to my point yesterday, McGraw, I'm not saying it well. The system is set up that way. That's why Iowa goes first, New Hampshire goes second, South Carolina goes third, Nevada is today. It creates these places where the candidates must step up and raise this money to spend. And the consultants talk them into it. You know, right now, Donald Trump has 60 delegates. He needs 1,250 some odd delegates. And yet the press and the media and the money looks like the race is half over because of how much has been spent. And it's really confusing, and it's really not a good system, and I think it's breaking down. One of the fruits of this cycle will be, I think, a new system, a new approach to nominating a candidate for the Republican uh, nomination. Let's go closer to home and talk about the governor's race on the GOP side. There's a lot of money being raised by Eric Greitens. Uh, Bruner has a lot of money that he's spending on his own. Uh, we know that Catherine Hannaway has spent quite a bit or raised quite a bit of money. Uh, are you seeing that same consultant class do that here locally? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, the names may not be as familiar. It's not, uh, it's not Carl Rove, but there's about a half a dozen Missouri consultants that bounce around. Jeff Rowe, who is with Ted Cruz, is with Catherine Hannaway, or his company is. You know, David Barklage, who for decades got paid by Peter Kinder. He's now with Bruner. You know, Greg Keller, who's a very prominent so-called consultant. Greg was with Walker, Scott Walker, now he's with Bruner. These guys, it's a gravy train. So if you follow the money, and again, I'm not belittling their talent. Some of these guys are experienced guys, but they move where the money is. And so the question you have to say is, I would predict today, if the vote for pre uh, governor was today, Peter Kinder wins because of name ID and experience. But it's, the, the election isn't today, and Peter's going to have to raise enough money to put up TV and radio and all. But it's, it's a mess. And I think... Uh, the, the Greitens videos, his response has been, you know, kind of choppy. Uh, Bruner, you know, and, and Catherine have a lot of work to do. So it, I don't know. I, and there's, there's Chris Coster, our, our old friend, the Democrat, sitting on the other side with no opponent. 
no need to do anything but keep uh, being attorney general. It's it's uh, it's a daunting task. All right, know. Ed Martin. So um, I've had candidates tell me off the record that when they go in front of a microphone or a camera, that their consultants have them thinking so many different things that 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 they don't know whether to sit or stand or tie or whatever this and that. And then the minute they get out, like Jeb Bush Saturday night. Jeb Bush, free of anybody telling him what to do, gave the best speech of his career stepping out of the race. And you see that time and time again. The candidates give the best speech after they're out, and everybody says, where was that guy on the campaign trail? Are yeah, and, you know, you and I, I don't know, a year or two ago we talked about this because we were you know, out had a cup of coffee and we're saying, you know, how, does it, how is it these guys spend tens of thousands of dollars on consultants who show them polls and then they get themselves wound up too tight. I think with, look, with Trump, you can say a lot about Trump, and in many ways he's a showman, but as, as someone once said, <laughs> when you learn to fake authenticity, you've got it made. I mean, you know, you believe him, like Bill Clinton, you believe that he's saying what he thinks and feels. The rest of these guys sound like they're in talking point land, and, and as you said, people smell it a mile away now. They smell it through the, the TV and the radio and all, and it, it does make you wonder, again, I think you're seeing some of that break down because of Trump. Cruz is a little bit, he's not, sometimes he's a little bit harsh, but he's more, you feel like he's fighting for you. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm reminded, and you know, I sent that email you saw about Justice Scalia's death. You know, a guy like Scalia, all these decades, he had this persona that people related to. Some people didn't like him, but it was authentic. And you wonder where some of these people are. But they get, look, if they just get wound up around their axle on, on the polling and on what you should say and the words you should say, and it makes your eyes roll back in your head. And I think the public is rejecting it. So uh, we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Who wins this thing? Well, today I wouldn't bet against Trump. I mean, Trump's going to win Nevada tonight, and then I think he runs the tables. I mean, I, I don't see anybody. Now Cruz is having to fire. Rick Tyler, who he fired, is a great guy, very talented. I think that was a fall guy, probably a mistake in the long run. Rubio, is a, uh, he doesn't have the infrastructure yet to win, so I think it's Trump's to lose, which is possible still. He's a, certainly an unconventional candidate. but uh, And the Democrats right now... I don't think they get their act together. I don't think Hillary will win uh, win the primary, and I don't think she can win the general. She's unlikable enough that even people that want to be Democrats are like, this is too much. So I, it's going to be an interesting year. I don't know. I'm not convinced you, of any of it. Are but. you saying here on February 23rd, or, or February 23rd that you think Donald Trump could be our next president of the United States? Oh, my gosh. But there's no doubt about that. Today, I wouldn't bet against – I'd say it's Trump's to lose all across the board, the way the numbers are today. I mean, the big right. things are going to happen. Right. Romney was, Romney was going to win, too, on about April 15th, and then you saw what happened over the summer. So, you know, it's uh, – but today, I would say Trump's the favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Martin. Ed, thanks for checking in. I'll talk to you soon. All right, McGraw. Thank you. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is, you know, we're saying you know, with all these different consultants that these candidates have, yeah. they're, you know, they're trying to do the, the, the uh, active words that they right, want right, right. people to hear. And we still don't know. Is Trump really being Trump or is he still playing a character? I thought that the other day. I thought there are people who are going to vote for Trump who are voting for him because he's not pandering. And then there are other people who will vote for Trump hoping that he's pandering mm -hmm. and hope they're going to vote for Trump hoping he's lying. So <laughs> where are we in America that you're voting for a president and you're saying to yourself, boy, I sure hope he, he's lying. I know, because you hear so many people who know him saying right. this is not Trump. Right, right, right. right.